Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for i5 for the iPhone is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Don't call to come back. I've been here for 44 episodes. That's a palindrome episode, by the way, which is good luck. We also haven't had a palindrome episode in 11 weeks, which itself is a palindrome. So, I don't know. Congratulations to all of you. This is not actually an acid trip. This is i5 for the iPhone, the show where we pick the five best iPhone apps, news, tips and tricks, and share them with you. I'm Sarah Lane, and I think June Bloom is an old wives' tale. This is gonna be our sunniest show ever. Number one. So Apple's Worldwide Developers Conference was last week. You may have heard about it. Tim Cook and the gang showed off Apple's brand new iOS 7. Now there's a good chance you're not running iOS 7 yet because it's only in developer beta right now, which is a very nice way of saying it's far from finished and it's buggy as f it's very buggy. Also, you're either gonna love it or you're gonna hate it. I'm actually really serious about this. I don't think it's possible for anybody to be like, oh, yeah, I don't know, I didn't really notice the difference because it's very, very different. All the icons have completely changed. We have what's known as flattened graphics, which basically means shadows and three-dimensional aspects have mostly been stripped out and replaced with simplified, vibrant icons. So I wanna ask you guys now, what do you think about this new look? My first reaction, some of you watched our, our content live, was, ugh, that's rather hideous. But I'm already starting to get used to the way that it looks. We could go into all of the features and the changes and the what's difference, but I'm not sure that we should do that now because since iOS 7 is in beta and it's not actually being released to the public until the fall, a lot of stuff is going to change between now and then. But at least for the purposes of looking at something, let's start with the camera app because I know you all love camera apps as much as I love camera apps. So barring any unforeseen changes, the new photo app is great. We've got real-time filters, didn't have those before. We've got an option to square crop for all you Instagram users. That's kind of nice and handy. There's an easier panorama mode. You into it, iFivers? I am. Before now, I pretty much never used the native camera app. There's nothing wrong with it, but it was very limited. I'd always have to import into another photo app if I wanted to add filters or crop. Eh, why bother? And yes, this app may change before the official release, but it's definitely a step in the right direction. Maybe we can do a little looking at iOS 7 every week until it launches. Yeah, you guys like that? Okay, we'll do that. Number two, how well do you know your neighbors? And by neighbors, I mean the ones in your apartment building or who live on your block or around the corner or share a wall with you. Would you be okay knocking on their door and asking to borrow some sugar? Well, <laughs> if you're in my neighborhood, the chances are no, because it's crazy out there. But neighbors that are leaning on each other is a big part of a community that works. And an app called Nextdoor wants to help you with yours. You choose your neighborhood, and then you have to authenticate your address to prove that you actually live where you say you do. It's very important to actually be living where you say you do so that your neighbors really are your neighbors. Then you're off and running. Next door members can buy and sell goods from each other. They can post a heads up if there's activity in the neighborhood, suspicious, or maybe they're looking for you know, a parking spot that someone might not be using in their garage. You might wanna pass along word that a new sushi restaurant is going into that vacant storefront. You get the idea. It's a social network that's highly restricted to a physical location. But next door really works because neighborhoods really thrive from community particularly in a city like where I live, where you might otherwise get the sense that everybody's just kind of passing through. Some U.S. cities have also adopted Nextdoor as sort of a gateway between local law enforcement and residents, too. New York's Mayor Michael Bloomberg just announced that his administration will start using Nextdoor as a way to keep people up to date on things like crime, traffic, and construction in all five boroughs. It's also a great way for the public to feel like they have a good dialogue with the people that are keeping things running. Nextdoor has a web presence. In fact, that's what I was using before it ever had an app. 
but I actually kind of like the app better. It's really nice. My only gripe, I can't seem to figure out how to update my address even though I've moved because now I'm in a new neighborhood. Number three, I'm feeling da tippy. How about you? Time for a little da tip from George. He writes, an easy way to get steadier pictures when shooting with your iPhone, if you can't use your earbuds, is to hold down the screen button, steady yourself, and then lift your finger. The camera app shoots on the lift, not actually the tap. This technique also works great when waiting, trying to get that just right moment shot, like a panning shot. I'm telling you, the photo app da tip hits just keep on coming. <laughs> when will they stop? Thanks, George. This is actually one of those tricks that seems really subtle, like, is it really gonna matter? But once you know about it, you probably end up using the tap and hold technique a lot more often. In fact, I tried it out in the native camera app, in Camera Plus, and in an app called Snapsy that I also use quite a bit, and they all work the same way. Number four. Oh, hell, let's just stay on the photo da trip train a little longer. Ty Roderick writes, I'm freaking out because I just found out you can move photos in an album you've already made. No more adding photos one by one to organize or to put in chronological order. Here are the steps. Go into your Photos app, go into one of your albums, tap Edit, and click and hold and move photos around. I agree, Ty Roderick. This is great for overall organization, especially if you have multiple photo folders. I should point out, though, that this is only good for photos stored locally on your phone. It does not apply to your cloud-based photo stream that you can access from other devices like your iPad or an Apple TV and that you might be sharing with other people. It kind of makes sense, though, because you probably wouldn't want all those people moving photos around anyway, but just wanted to point out that little limitation. Now, I don't know about you guys, but my Photos app is really in need of some trimming and grooming. I really hate how many of my photo apps all want to create their own albums for you. I didn't ask Hipstamatic to make a folder called Hipstaprints. That's just what it does. By the way, if you don't like that kind of organization, you can always move photos out of their branded app folders into your main camera roll or another folder of your choice. Number five. Let us rejoice, for Microsoft Office has finally come to the iPhone. Ah, except that it's not really that cool because it's not really a standalone app because it's really just an interface for Office 365 subscribers, which is Microsoft's cloud-based Office suite, which costs $100 per year. It is not a bad service. It's just not free. So who is this app for? Well, Office Mobile, which itself is a free app, is just designed for those of us who do a lot of work in Word, PowerPoint, Excel, use Outlook for email, and want to access our work from a bunch of different devices. That's what the whole 365 thing is about, getting, getting all your stuff in the cloud anytime from anywhere. Microsoft is smart not to restrict Office 365 to certain devices or leave out iPhone users entirely who might also use Office on a primary machine running Windows, for example. But for those of us who use free cloud-based suite of programs like Google Drive, $100 per year seems really steep, even if it's a nice app, and I really can't imagine why having an iPhone app would sway you into using Office 365 unless you were already using it and already loving it. But in any case, it is now there. And if you're using the Office mobile app on your iPhone and you absolutely love it and you feel like it does something that other suites of programs don't, doesn't do in a really, really amazing way, do write us and tell us why at i5 at twit.tv. Well, we've come to the end of the road. Still, I can't let go. It's unnatural. You belong to me. I belong to you. What you want to do is subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash i5, which is where you can catch up on past episodes and find links to our featured apps and tips and tricks too. Email us at i5 at twit.tv, leave us a voicemail at 614 on i5, or send us a video with an app review of your own. Come on, don't be shy, it's awesome. I'm Sarah Lane and I'll see you next week right here on i5 for the iPhone. Thank you.